Hi, I'm Stephanie Golden, I'm a mentor at Girls Right Now, and I'm with Victoria Seaborn, my mentee for this past year. So we're going to talk about an essay that Victoria wrote as part of our program that she got an award for. She is now a first year at Yale, and I'm really proud of her. So tell me about this essay and how you came up with the idea. Yeah, so the essay is titled The Secret Letter, uh, and I wanted to focus on my cultural identity, per se. Um, so the secret letter in question is the letter E with a tail. It's pronounced L, and it only exists in the Polish language. So my last name is Sibor, but the E is technically supposed to be that letter L. So I thought that this could be a good idea uh, a good way to perhaps show different aspects of my uh, identity. I remember reading an essay about someone who used the letter S to show the things that they were missing in their life. Um, so I really like the idea of using a letter as a starting point to show something about my identity and my life with as per the writing prompt. So I really like uh, liked just trying to see and show how I balance my Polish identity and how I try to connect with that culture while also being born in the United States and connecting with that. So that's great. I remember it also had a lot to do with your neighborhood, didn't it? It did. Um, during our workshops and our time together at Girls Right Now, we I feel like we often discuss the idea of neighborhoods, which was very interesting. Um, I grew up in Greenpoint, which is in North Brooklyn. And when I was younger, it was still a very predominantly Polish neighborhood. Now it's changed and gotten gentrified. So uh, there's definitely a big difference in the community now. So it's been interesting to reminisce upon what I remember when I was younger and how I used to know more of my neighbors and more of the local stores. And now it's becoming more diverse, which is good, but it is also unfortunate to see some of that community aspect leave the neighborhood and become more of a popular like daytime destination for people. And how did that figure in your essay? So, because I remember also there was something in it about leaving for college. Yes, um, I remember writing, and actually I realized this while I was writing it, that I had, I used to Americanize my name more frequently, but as I was, as I actually wrote like my personal essay for college, and as I went through more of a reflection process through Girls Right Now last year, I realized that I wanted to, I guess, make sure I connected with that part of my identity more. Um, and so instead of when asked how to pronounce my name, instead of saying Sibor, I would more often say like Shambor or the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, and it's a minor thing. And I think a lot of people perhaps have harder struggles with their name and it being mispronounced. But I think that it is something that many people might share uh, in common. So I think it is an interesting concept of reclaiming your name in the way it's originally supposed to be said. And talk about Greenpoint and leaving Greenpoint and how you feel, like what you said in the essay about leaving um, leaving for college and having kind of mixed feelings about leaving Greenpoint. Yeah, so I have since, this is I think my third or fourth week in New Haven in college. So it's been very interesting being away from the city and from what I'm used to. Um, I definitely miss a lot of my friends, my neighbors who I knew, and there's a sense of familiarity that's lost per se, but I think I've also grown to appreciate Greenpoint a lot. I'm excited to go back in a few weeks, hopefully, but I think when I do go back, it will, from my friend who has gone back recently, she said that things have still continued and kept going, even though she wasn't there. So I think that will be an interesting feeling that while it is not a small town, things consistently change and move in a city, but I will always remember it a certain way. 
I remember you talked in the essay that about how because there were so many changes, it wasn't quite so hard to read it. Was that right? That is true. I think that might have also been in other workshops that we were working on, but mm -hmm. the general idea is that I think it's a good time to leave and perhaps see another place. But my understanding of my neighborhood and where I come from is still pretty solid. So I think it will be interesting to see what happens as time goes on. Yeah, I think so too. Speaking of Girls Right Now workshops, I remember during one of our sessions, you wrote about a missing pen when doing one of the writing prompts. How did that come about? Well, we did an exercise. <clears throat> it was one of the ones in the Girls Right Now manual. It was five lost things. So first we made a list of five things we had lost. So I made the four, I made a list of four things and they were all kind of heavy, serious things. And then I needed a fifth. So I stuck in this pen that I had lost when I was in the library doing research for a book I had written. And I thought it would be just a fun thing. And so then there was you know, that time where we both are sitting on our the other each side of the Zoom screen <laughs> writing our thing. And there's something about that space of having to produce something very quickly out of your head. It lends itself to free writing and not really trying to use your intellect. It's like more of just letting things flow. So I wrote all this stuff about this pen because I had never forgotten. It was a very silly way that I lost it, which is that it was in my pocket and it went down the toilet when I was in the restroom. And I felt terrible about losing that pen. So I wrote about that. And then I realized I had something, I liked it. So I worked on it and I found a source that talked about why we get attached to objects. And I wrote it and sent it out and I got it got accepted for publication by an online publication that publishes things about objects. So I was very pleased by that. <laughs> Although it has been published yet, they're still sitting on it. That is wonderful. I'm glad to hear that good content could be produced from a writing prompt. Have there been any other ideas that came about through Girls Right Now? Yeah, there was a big one because we, this was way back when we were still meeting in person and we, so there's like 50 or 70 girls and mentors in the room. And I, we were supposed to write fashion memoirs. <clears throat> How does what you're wearing reflect your culture and values? And everybody's sitting there scribbling and I couldn't think of anything except how I sewed all these clothes when I was a kid. And why did I do that? I didn't even like doing it, but I thought I had to. And so I'm sitting there puzzling over this and scribbling. And I realized it was important to me. So it took like a year to write this essay and figure out everything. And it turned out to be about cutting my hair when I was 12 years old and how that made me feel and how I grew it back during the pandemic and how that made me feel. And that one was published too. That was published last spring. It took a long time. But as I said, I have produced amazing things in that space of being in, of having to write something really quickly without thinking too much about it. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Um, I was very happy to read that article when it did get published. So very fascinating read, I have to say. Um, during our sessions too, this year, it was interesting that we had the first half in virtual on Zoom as we are here now. And then the second half we met in person. How did, did you feel there was like a difference between those sessions or how did, was, was there a difference in productivity? I don't know about the productivity, but it's <laughs> so much easier to get to know somebody when they're in front of you. Cause you know, we got, we had, we developed a great relationship over Zoom, but being together and seeing you from the shoulders down was very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it gives you a, a better sense of who the person is. And there's some quality of energetic transmission when you're with another person live that you just don't get through the screen. So I'm hoping that whoever is going to be my next mentee, I get to do that with too. So 
this was a, this was sort of fun interviewing each other. So um, I hope other people have enjoyed this little conversation. Thank <laughs> you.